Soon after I started writing The Missing Link, I had an experience that made me realize how much my world had changed. You see, my world started in a place like this, a place with pews, a holy place. I grew up in Southern American fundamentalist Christianity, and I learned beautiful things there. The spiritual part of me came alive there, and that's something that I still deeply value. But the experience was, as I started writing the book, I was on a trip to Houston, the plane had landed, and a friend of mine called and said, hey Lee, we've got VIP tickets to the Lucy exhibition. Do you wanna come see Lucy? And I went without a moment's hesitation, absolutely. Hung up my cell phone and thought for a moment, wow, that's a change. You're probably familiar with the Lucy that I'm talking about. The prehistoric human fossil, the one that rocked our world and helped us to begin to understand the evolution of humans. Well, for the first time in my life, I wasn't afraid to find out more about human evolution. Now, where are you in the whole learning about evolution spectrum? Perhaps you're a biology teacher, a life science teacher, who you're not sure about the evidence for evolution. Well, don't be afraid. There are a lot of evolution learners like us out there. Um, perhaps you're like me. You grew up in the kind of background or in the kind of schools where evolution wasn't taught. Or perhaps it's just simply that you're coming from a different science discipline. You're a chemist or a physicist, and now you're finding yourself in the position of having to teach biology. And you need to learn about evolution. Well, there are a lot of resources out there, and that's one thing, that's the main thing I want you to know. Lots of resources online to help you bone up on evolution, brush up on it. Um, in fact, in my book, I put an appendix at the end, help. I'm a biology teacher, and I don't even think I understand evolution for people like us who are still learning about evolution. Um, were you aware of all the resources that are online? One of my favorites is the lab of Dr. Hans Thuesen. He is a paleontologist that works on whales and whale fossils. And were you aware that you can see what his lab is doing and digging out of the ground by going and visiting his website? Many scientists are putting their work online and you and your students can visit those sites and see firsthand fossils. Another site that I really like is um, Talk Origins. If you're not familiar with that, their archive is great for a whole series of questions that, and the answers that they give are always referenced with scientific journals. So the science is there. Are you aware that the Smithsonian Institution is putting its whole human or human fossils collection online? You can even go and virtually take some of the skulls that they have and rotate them or look at the top or look at the bottom. It's interactive. Many museums around the world are beginning to take their fossil collections and put them online. And you and your students can go on virtual field trips to those museums and see the evidence firsthand. As I talk about in my approach in the book, an inquiry-based approach to teaching evolution is all about starting with the evidence. Well. You can't go dig up your own evidence out of your school's backyard, right? But what if the evidence is already out there online? And it is. And it's more and more of it is coming online. Throughout my book, you'll see references to web, good, great websites. You can check my blog out for ones that I've written there. Um, but the main thing that I want to encourage you is be an evolution learner. There are a bunch of us out there who are still wrapping our heads around the science. And if you're like me, and this is the kind of background that you grew up in, you don't have to leave it to understand evolution. Uh, you can do both, as I have done, and as many others have done.